Hello everyone, this is Swata Tulathar from Atyus Online Study and today I am going to give you my presentation on Administrative System of Litchivy and here in this presentation I am going to inform you about Litchivy Regime, Litchivy Administrative System, Central Administration and Civilization and Culture of Litchivy Administration. For helping me to finish this project and present this presentation among you, I would like to thank my friends Ms. Srijana Shrestha and Mr. Sagar Rizal. Lichivi. The Kirat dynasty in Nepal was followed by the Lichivis who ruled Nepal from the 1st century AD to 880 AD. During the time of Gautam Buddha, the kings of Lichivi dynasty were ruling over Vaishali, which is now known as Muzaffar. Furpur in modern Bihar. According to the inscription of Jayadev II, Vaishali had a partly uh, democratic form of government. Vaishali was the land of Lichivis. After it was destroyed by Ajatsatru, they flew away to Nepal. Lichivi Regain Supashpa was the first Lichivi to enter Nepal. Jayadev I the first king of Lichivi dynasty defeated Bhaskar Verma of Som dynasty and established Lichivi dynasty in Nepal. We have some well-known kings of Lichivi dynasty and they are as follows. Brishdev Brishdev was another powerful king of the Lichivis who extended his territory far and wide. Chandragupta I, the Indian emperor, was alarmed with the rise of Brishdev, so he married Kumara Devi the daughter of Brishdev to preserve the sovereignty of India. Kumara Devi gave birth to Emperor Samundra Gupta. Some historians also opinion that Bhaskar Verma was the father of Kumara Devi. Haridatta King Haridatta built four Narayan temples and they are Changu Narayan, Vishanku Narayan, Sikha Narayan and Ichangu Narayan. He also built Buddha Nilkanta. He made Vaishnavism the royal cult of Nepal. Mandev. Mandev is the first historical king of Nepal. According to the inscriptions of Changu Narayan Temple, Mandev ruled Nepal from 464 AD to 505 AD. He had acquired good skill in the art of warfare and is a lover of art and architecture. He ascended the throne at very young age after that of his father Dharmadev. His mother Rajavati guided him in administration. Mandev was very powerful, brave and good administrator. He extended his territory up to the Himalayas in the north, across the Kaligandaki in the west and the Koshi in the east. Religious Mandev was a great devotee of Lord Vishnu but respected Buddhism as well. Mandev and his mother Rajavati performed many religious sacrifices, gave gifts to Brahmins and worshipped Changu Narayan. He built many vihars and stupas in different parts of the country. He erected idols of Tribikram in Lajimpat, Bhaman and Vishnu. He built many taps, patis and powas. Administration Mandev was a bold, strong and liberal king. He was a wise administrator, chief patron, guardian and great supporter to his people. He built a famous royal palace that was called Mangriha at Gokarna from where he conducted the administration of the country. He built the shrine of Changu Narayan and renovated the Chakra Mahavihar. He minted coins in his name for the first time in the history of Nepal and named them Mananka. Shivdev I. Shivdev I became king after the death of his father Mandev in about 588 AD. He was a religious minded, learned and patient king. He was pleased by Amshavarma, a high official in the court of Shivdev I and entrusted him with the task of administration. Being impressed by Amshavarma's heroism and administrative ability, he gave his daughter to Amshavarma for marriage and made him Mahasamanta, which is equivalent to Prime Minister. During his reign, Amchivarma was the first 
de facto ruler, Tom Shivarma. After the death of Shivdev in 605 AD, Amshivarma became the first sovereign and adopted the title of king. Amshivarma belonged to the Thakuri clan and thus he established the Thakuri dynasty in Nepal. He built Kailashkut Pawan at Dev Patan and transferred the seat of government from Mangriha to Kailashkut. He also minted coins in his name. Ruler Amshivarma was brilliant with all the kingly qualities and virtues. He was a just impartial and a good administrator. He was a true servant of the people without any political bias. Yung Seng writes about Angshivarma as a man of high accomplishments and great glory. According to some inscription, King Shivdev has mentioned Angshivarma as a man of universal fame who destroyed his enemies by his heroic nature. Literature Amshivarma was a learned man and respected scholar. He wrote a book on Sanskrit grammar. The great grammarian Chandravarma, a scholar of Nalanda University, was patronized by him. Religion Amshivarma followed Shaivism but was tolerant towards all the religions. He can rightly be compared to the Emperor Ashoka of India who had impartial feelings without any religious prejudices. Economic Development For the development of the economic condition of the people, he paid great attention to the improvement of trade and commerce of the country. He made every effort to help the people by providing canals to irrigate the fields. The income earned by living water tax, land tax, defense tax were used for the development works of the country. He never used those earnings for his personal pleasure and luxury. Diplomacy During the regime, when Harsvardhana of India and Shrongsang Gampo of Tibet was trying to extend their territories, he made matrimonial alliance. He gave his daughter Prikuti in marriage to the king, Tibetan king Shrongsang Gampo. He also gave his sister Pog Devi in marriage to an Indian king, Shur Sen. With all his political wisdom and farsightedness, Amshivarma maintained the sovereignty and independence of the country. Successor After the death of Amshivarma, Udaydev I, son of Shivdev, ascended the throne. Dev dethroned his brother Shivdev with help of Jisnu Gupta who was chief of Avir dynasty. Shivdev sought help of Tibet. Dev rules from Mangriha and Jisnu Gupta from Kailashkut. Narendra Dev Narendra Dev was the son of Uday Dev too. Uday Dev had to take shelter under the Tibetan king Strong Sang Gampo. Narendra Dev with Tibetan aid took revenge against the enemy of his father and restored his ancestral throne by defeating Vishnu Gupta. Thus, he ended the double rule and became the seventh king of the Lichivi dynasty. He ascended the throne in about 640 AD. He was a wise and a good ruler. Shivdev II Shivdev II was the son of Narendra Dev I who became king after his death. He maintained a matrimonial relation with Magad by marrying Bista Devi, the daughter of King Bhog Verma of Magad. Jayadev II Jayadev II was the son of Shivdev II who became king after his death. He was a learned man and a great poet. When his mother, Bista Devi, offered a silver lotus to Pashupati Nath, he composed a mantra and inscribed the same on the stone behind the huge brass image of Nandi, which is bull, in front of the temple of Pashupati Nath. Varadev Varadev, also known as Aramudi, made Lalitpatan his capital. He was a brave and clever king. According to Kalhans Ragini. He conquered many principalities of India and then advanced to occupy Nepal in 782 AD. Lichavi Administrative System The Lichavis ruled Nepal from the 1st century AD to 880 AD. 
There was the compulsion for the Lichavis to develop fairly a large administrative infrastructure both at central and local levels. In fact, during Lichavis regime, Nepal had a well-organized administrative system throughout the kingdom. The king was the dictator exercising legislative, executive, judicial and military powers, but in practice, his dictatorship was dedicated to the promotion of the welfare of the people and to rule in accordance with the law based on the Hindu religious scriptures. The king himself used to warn and punish those government servants who violated them. The royal charters, decrees and laws were highly respected. Lichavi king used to have principal officer and his assistant of royal palace. Whenever the king happened to be weak or incapable, they used to exercise real authority in the name of their master and as uh, such only uh, those having the confidence of being can be appointed in their respective positions. Central Administration of Lichavi Central Administration of Lichavi comprised the king, the crown prince, and a Matya Parishad. King King is a chief executive, supreme legislator, and chief of the army. Crown Prince Amshivarma initiated the tradition of declaring Crown Prince as the successor to the throne. Amatya Parishad Amatya Parishad refers to Council of Ministers. Lichavi set up a Council of Ministers headed by Mahasamanta for the efficient administration of the country. The Royal Palace Secretariat ran the administration as of the country. Before Amshivarma, meeting of Grand Council was held at Mangriha Palace. Amshivarma held meeting at Kailashkut Bhavan. Jishnu Gupta also ruled from Kailashkut Bhavan. Officials of Royal Palace Secretariat Some officials of Royal Palace Secretariat are as follows. Maha Pratihar and Pratihar or Dawarikas. He is a personal secretary to the king who serves as the aide de cap ADC to the king. He is the link between the king and people. Functions of Dawarikas are to advise the king, provide protection and security to the king, present the grievances and petitions to the king and obtain king's decisions. Dutaka they are high-level officers who convey the royal charters, decrees, and orders to the people. Pattarkapadiya They are private counsellors of the king at the time of Amshivarma. A group of officials were involved in the service of the king. The administrative power was not centralized but passed to the local bodies, associations, and assemblies of the people. The kingdom was divided into provinces, districts, and villages. There was offices located at eastern and western sides of the royal palace who looked after administration of their respective sites. Purbadikaran looked after the eastern region whereas Pastimadikaran looked after the western side. Military administration Infantry, cavalry, and infantry were three types of military forces. Infantry they are army forces engaged in military combat on foot. They are distinguished from cavalry, artillery, and tank forces. Cavalry. They are military force serving on horseback. Elfantry. They are military forces that uses elephants. Proper training was given to the army from time to time. During the war, the king himself led the army. Law, courts, and judicial affairs. There were law courts to administer justice. There were local bodies called the Pachali to settle minor disputes and to carry out the public utility services. Learned men were consulted to make laws. There were different forms of punishments which were according to the gravity of the offense. Severe punishment were given to thieves, robbers, murderers and rebels. Economic condition. The main source of income of the government was taxation. The merchants had to pay custom duty for the imported and exported goods. Foreign relations Lichavis maintained good relationship with the neighboring countries. Nepal had trade relations with India, Tibet and China. 
Nepal has also has become the trophy between India and China. Civilization and culture of Lichavi. There was peace and prosperity in the kingdom of Nepal during the rule of the Lichavis. Nepal could not develop its culture, religion, economic condition, and administrative system before Richard, before Lichavis due to lack of skillful ruler. Social condition. Though the Lichavis were Hindus and there was a caste system in the society, other classes of people were not neglected. There were Ahirs, Kirats, Thakuris, and Putiyas. Inter-caste marriage was also prevalent in their time. Religion The Lichavi rulers were the followers of Hinduism, but they never hated Buddhism. There was a great religious tolerance. Literature, art, and architecture. Sanskrit was their official language. King Angshivarma has composed a grammar in Sanskrit, whereas Jayadev had written poems in Sanskrit. The written history and existing monuments show that the Lichavis were the pioneers who introduced the Pagora style of architecture in the valley. Lichavi king Mandev who built the famous Changu Narayan temple 13 km east of Kathmandu laid the foundation of Kathmandu's architecture and much of its culture. The writings of Chinese scholars who visited the valley in the 17th century recorded a well-built town and settlements describing Pashupati Nath temple, the beautiful palaces and other major buildings. With the end of this presentation, I would like to inform you that facts about Lichavi has been extracted from these sources. So, it was a pleasure for me to present knowledge I gained via a TUS online study. More of the educational videos are on the way, so do press like button, share button, and subscribe button. And do leave your valuable comments in the comment box to help us improve our weakness and maintain better sight. So, thank you.